Where does gold come from? This question, it turns out, is surprisingly difficult to answer. But a new observation seems to now have solved the mystery. Let's have a look. The chemical elements that we find on Earth all have a long history. The lightest of them, like hydrogen and helium, were produced directly in the early universe. The heavier ones are then created from nuclear fusion going on in stars. However, there are a few elements which we have on Earth that nuclear fusion does not readily produce. Those are gold, platinum, uranium and a few others. Their formation requires rapid neutron capture which is called the R process. This requires an extreme environment rich in free neutrons and high temperatures. For a long time, astrophysicists thought that these elements are produced in supernova explosions. The idea was that the collapse of the iron core blasts out nuclei and neutrons at such a high speed that rapid neutron capture becomes possible. However, over the years, detailed models show that this blast wouldn't have sufficiently many neutrons and also didn't move quickly enough. It just couldn't sustain the rapid neutron captures needed to produce nuclei like gold and platinum. The idea that supernovae produce gold has by now been mostly abandoned. Don't you feel so much better knowing that sometimes even a supernova isn't energetic enough? Astrophysicists then thought that the heaviest elements are produced in the collision of neutrons. Neutron stars. Neutron stars are the remains of some supernovae explosions. Sometimes it happens that two of them end up orbiting around each other. These binary systems slowly lose energy by gravitational radiation and spiral into each other until they merge with a burst of gravitational waves. This creates the right conditions for the R process because when the stars collide, they eject extremely neutron rich matter that decompresses rapidly. This gives small seed nuclei access to vast numbers of free neutrons. This hypothesis was directly confirmed in August 2017 when LIGO and Virgo recorded gravitational waves coming from such a merger. Telescopes then looked at the light coming from the location in the optical and infrared range. They found evidence that our processes must have occurred and calculated how much of each element the merger would have produced. They found that the event had produced 3 to 13 Earth masses in gold. It was the first direct proof that smashing neutron stars are major gold factories and a reminder that physics still makes progress. But that doesn't entirely solve the problem. The issue is there just aren't sufficiently many of these neutron star mergers. This is especially obvious in the early universe, because it can take billions of years in which stars in a binary system circle around each other until they finally merge. Yet, astrophysicists know from spectral analyses that some of the earliest stars already contain gold. So where does that come from? This is where the new paper comes in. These astrophysicists say they found another source for gold that is another way to do these R processes. And this is is giant flares from magnetars. Magnetars are neutron stars with super strong magnetic fields that can reach up to 100 billion tesla. Occasionally they erupt in flares, much like our sun, but so powerful that they briefly outshine all other galactic x-ray sources. The physicists say that these flares blast off a small amount of the neutron-rich crust into space at enormously high speeds, and that creates the right and environment for rapid neutron capture to take place. And it isn't just a theory. They have data to back up their idea. They looked at data from a 2004 flare that came from a magnetar in the constellation Sagittarius. It's on the other end of the Milky Way, about 40,000 light years away from us. This flare had a delayed glow of gamma rays lasting several minutes. It was too faint to directly look for signs of gold, because that would have been produced in comparably 
relatively small amounts. However, they did find evidence of nuclear decays, which strongly suggests that our processes must have occurred. This means that gold and platinum would have been produced as well. Now, a magnetar flare produces far less of these heavy elements than a neutron star merger, just because there's less material involved. But unlike neutron star mergers, which are rare occurrences, flares happen pretty much all the time. And they also started happening much sooner, already after the first supernovae left behind neutron star remnants. The researchers estimate that over cosmic history, these flares have contributed around 1 to 10 percent of the total galactic inventory of heavy elements, enough to explain the early gold seen in ancient stars. So the new picture is that most of the gold and platinum we have on our planet comes from neutron star mergers, but a tenth or so comes from the magnetar flares. The universe is full of surprises. You think a star is just sitting there being dense, and then it throws gold at you. And now that material is hanging from someone's earlobe in a disco. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and how to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.